Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 220. I'm your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com, and we're excited to have back with us the internationally acclaimed and brilliantly creative fantasy author, David Trotter. Dave, (laughs) how you doing? Doing fantastic. It's great to be back. Um, Love the energy. It's, uh, I'm in a new room. I'm in a new room. I see so, that. You know, uh, kids are growing up, so my office is now kid number three's room. So I, uh, <laughs> I'm in my bedroom now. So that'll happen. Yeah. You know, and now, I'm living the dream. And so what's really exciting is that you're here because you just had a, a new Kickstarter that 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 launched a few days ago. So yeah, no Kickstarter for Azure Tides just went live. Super exciting. Did not expect it to go quite as quickly as it did we actually hit funding within like four hours of it launching so we like wow we hit the go live button it's i think at like seven o'clock in the morning uh or 6 a.m central time um and by like it wasn't even like 10 o'clock we were fully funded uh fully funded and then we met our first stretch goal before the end of the first day so wow. just super exciting Right. And now, so, cause you were on earlier and you're talking about your birthright, uh, the, yep. the book that you came out with before now this, for those that are familiar with birthright that actually watched the interview and read the book, this takes place in the same world as birthright. Absolutely. If you'll afford me just a few minutes. So yeah, if you think about like what I created, if you've read, I have here, you know, birth rights if you're interested you can definitely check it out um link in my bio obviously you can go check out i would highly advise the story comic interview that we did it was great fun but um one of the things i loved or that i loved most about the, the world i'm creating is it, it's it's got layers i'm a fantasy author and i've always i appreciated some of those like classic fantasy stories that had layers it wasn't just like a single point of view or a single pro- protagonist right um but also you know you got to be careful um it's hard when you're a new aspiring author to drop like a 1400 page tome so there's <laughs> lots of stories i wanted to tell um that are very important to the world i created so i decided hey i'm going to release some of these and i i don't want to say short stories because this is like a 50 plus thousand word novel like it's a full-length novel as your tides wow. is um and it tells the story of a couple of characters that are very very important to book two in my series which should be mm. coming out next year um uh it's called chains of a broken god i've rewritten it twice and i'm in my final rewrites before i send it off to edits so okay um but azure tides uh it's it can be read either before or after birth rights um because it takes place simultaneously so okay it, cool you can definitely pick up either um honestly it's it's a fun story it it comes from my love of pirates of the caribbean and also mm. like old school vampire movies so i thought you know what would happen if you had some like pirates that were vampires and then obviously there's some really cool magic systems that go in there but it was just it's just been a ton of fun to like see this come to life um one of my favorite characters that i think i've written is in this book um and that's unapua so she is based off of a uh, kind of polynesian culture uh but it's a matriarchy so like all their captains their political leaders their social leaders their entire structure is all like female-led it's a matriarchy and uh, okay so she's kind of training to be uh the next in her house like the next okay. leader of her house and so she's off at sea with a captain like learning the ways of the sea and um it, the whole story, though, is told through the perspective of Seamus, who he is a deckhand, and he is pictured here. Had a little bit of fun with AI generation, trying to create some people. And uh, he, uh, you know, he he's he was a little bit of a thief, you know. He, he and uh, he's maybe not the most upstanding citizen ever, but uh, he he gets into some trouble, and we see that this little. Uh, three hour tour turns off to be quite a bit more than any of them expected it to be. <laughs> and and so for those that, for those that read birthright, what can they expect 
um, any other similar characters that you're going to see in this, even though you said it I, takes place simultaneously. Yeah, absolutely. So here's some things that like you can definitely expect. Um, there are some large overworld uh, things that are taking place. Um, mm. Have if you've read Birthrights or not, one of the big things that's that like is a theme through the book, and this doesn't spoil anything, is there's a kind of underground kind of secret organi organization. Think the Illuminati, something like that. And uh, we get a lot of point of views of point of views of one of those members in this story so oh, cool. uh he goes by or he gets called or dubs the name of specter um because he kind of wears his golden mask and his purple robes as all the people that are a member of this organization do and uh you don't really know what he's doing you know and i, I don't i don't want to spoil anything but uh he's uh he's a pretty cool dude um <laughs> He's he's my first real good take on a morally gray character who's like truly morally gray as a major mm. POV, and uh, it's uh, it's interesting because you know you're on this ship and you start seeing this through Seamus's perspective as a deckhand and he's you know cleaning ships he's got some friends you know figuring out life as a you know 17 year old boy and. Um, then he stumbles across a meeting that he shouldn't be a part of trying to spy on right. Una, which, you know, it's, it's kind of YA themed a little bit. It's a little bit more YA than my birthrights book, though. It's still, okay. you'll get those same epic fantasy beats, you know, power, large world building, lots of stuff like that. But you know, he's, he's trying to spy on the ladies, you know, he's trying to find her and he stumbles across uh, a secret meeting where they're talking about stuff he shouldn't know about and uh, causes some problems. <laughs> and, uh, gets it very interesting very fast so you talked about in your first book how how the the pharaoh mage saga almost is a fantasy version of a superhero thing yes does this go on does this go under the same theme as that as a like a superhero genre and a fantasy setting yeah it, i will say again you get that very much near the end without giving any spoilers okay. away um in the pharaoh mage saga you have your major antagonists, which um, are these kind of like superhuman like beings. And mm. uh, one of them, her name is Ray Lilan or Captain Ray Lilan, and she's the captain of the Black Sister. Um, when you were scrolling through, she was the redhead. Uh, right. She is pretty much a super powered vampire. She is really, really bad. <laughs> um, she's just a really cool but really bad person. Um, I think this did a fantastic job of capturing. She's a smaller person, but that, don't let that fool you. She knows her crew well, and they will quite literally die for her. Um, and so what were, what are some of the things that you're excited about people discovering in this book? Just how much bigger the, the world is like, honestly, like, because through birthrights, uh, for those who've read it, and those who haven't, it pretty much takes place within a city. Um, okay. One of my favorite uh, modern fantasy novels is called Lies of Locke Lamora. And it's very much a contained story that takes place in a city. And I wanted mm. to explore that because I really wanted to get into the characters, right? I really wanted you to like understand the characters, the environment, like understand the world before we dive into book two, which it kind of goes boom in book two right like people are going different directions we see different countries different peoples different continents but like with azure tides we don't only see different continents we're out at sea and we're seeing how like this magic system that i developed how it affects you know not just people at land but people at sea other like historical mysterious objects um you know we look at the cover like if you scroll and you look at like the cover um just like in birthrights, there's a lot more than meets the eye uh, and what's in the cover, right? So for those who read birthrights, you see like the the, the, the metal claw that, you know, right, right here. And it's got like the, the magma dripping in it because you got the blue mists of power around it. Like there's lots of symbolism and people who read, who have read the book, they come back to me and been like, hey, I thought you had a cool cover. But now that I've read it, wow, there's some like really cool symbolism going to Azure Tides. Expect that as well. You know, mm. yeah, it's cool that there's a dragon and a big sword, but there's a lot more to that, that like, as you read the book, it's just going to become like, oh, that's, 
that's really cool. That's really impactful. So do you, and did you have the same designer? The design Absolutely. The, so my, cool. my artist, Aaron Moshner, fantastic coming back. Um, shout out to that second stretch goal that we're only like a hundred and I think we're like $130 away from right now. If we hit that, he's going to do a full page illustration. So, you know, in birthrights, he did, he did 10 different illustrations. That was kind of his like ode to the book. And, you know, if you like those, you know, think like stuff like this, where it's like a full page printout of like artwork that he himself drew. Um, if we hit this goal, uh, we'll have stuff like this in Azure Tides, full page illustrations. Um, and I'm just super pumped uh, because, I mean, we are we are rolling towards it. We had a couple new backers picked up today. We're just almost there. And do you and so talk about also your your third stretch goal that you hope to reach where you're going to be able to have the narration by Henry Kramer? Absolutely. So if you don't know who Henry Kramer is or if you don't know the Kramer family, Michael Kramer and Kate reading his mom and dad, they are like superstars in the voice acting for fantasy novels wheel mm. of time stormlight archive i mean i could go down list the mistborn saga like just so many like massive stories they put under their belt for indie authors you got to think like daniel green um he had them do his books uh shad had shadow of the conqueror done by them just like these massive titles that have been highly successful both in indie and in traditionally published they are the soul the voice of those series while their son henry he's an up-and-coming voice artist and my books they're told through typically now i have some older characters through a younger point of view like early 30s late 20s kind of points of views and so henry coming in at that age he's really able to capture that soul that feeling but i mean same time elcon in book one the high priest that you know it's such an impactful part of that book voiced by henry it's a lot of people's favorite voice acted character you know that's an older gentleman and he just he does such an amazing job and how does it change having an audio version of a story as compared to a reading piece? How much as a, as an author do you have to give up when you change the, the medium like that? That's a fantastic question. So for me, I give up nothing, right? You know, because for me, I put those words on paper and in my mind, I hear them the way I hear them. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like anybody who reads a book, they're going to develop their own thing. But what about those people who don't have time to sit down to read? They're, they're commuting to work. They're going to the gym. They've got, they got kids. They're trying to do the dishes or, you know, right. you know, they, they, they're busy or like my oldest brother who kind of sparked all this. We talked about this a little bit in our last one. He was born with degenerative eyesight, totally blind by the age of 11, 12, you know, just, right his only access to written media is via audio. And so things like this open up a world to those who, you know, have bad eyesight, who like me, who I'm ADHD, <laughs> I'm all over the place. By listening, I can really tune in and hear what the author is saying. I don't get distracted and, and the words don't float on the page for me. Cause you know, I do also suffer from dyslexia. So when I look at a page of words, if I read more than, four or five minutes at a time the words all start you know floating around on the page which by the way makes it really challenging to write but thank goodness for solid editors <laughs> mm. but that's a good point like how yeah what's your technique um as you're as you're writing so i have an amazing beta reader um mm. i actually have a couple they are fantastic um and i'm i'll preserve their uh anonymity i think that's the correct word having that person who's able to give me really constructive feedback and ask hey david was that actually what you meant to write because you sure used the word stone 42 times it didn't say anything else <laughs> you know or like hey you just said the same thing three different ways um or they're like hey the way you spelled that word totally different like the whole there 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 you know right <laughs> and you know so having a beta reader that's able to do that but then again having a, an editor that i can trust i mean being an author a lot of it comes down to who do you trust and who do you have and right. 
you know, I, I'm not wealthy, right? I can't afford a whole lot. So, you know, I've pulled different author groups on Facebook. I've joined a couple of really amazing ones where I've met some amazing people. If you look at my, uh, you bring back up that Kickstarter, like look at the team. I mean, Henry Kramer, I got, you know, Aaron Marshall right there, my artist and illustrator, uh, Rob Gary. you know, I couldn't have done this without him. He's like my manager, right? You got right. Eric who, you know, he takes all those files and he makes sure they're edited correctly. Henry Kramer, my narrator, I don't get to do this without them, you know, right. and I'm very, I, I'll say, I, you know, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but I'm very privileged in the sense that I'm able to work with such an amazing team. But because of that, I'm able to put out a high quality product. Mm. And, and you know, for everybody who's read it, are there little errors? Absolutely. I'm human. I can't afford, you know, 50,000 editors. You know, there's not 30 different people looking over everything I write. So, yeah, there's going to be little things here and there. But what it does allow me to do is tell a cohesive story that you're never jarred out of. What are some of the things that you learned from your previous Kickstarters that you're able to implement for this one? <laughs> Timing, <laughs> communication, and quality. Okay. If you look at my first Kickstarter versus this one, and you'd have to go back to like way back then. I'm not asking you to bring them up, but for anybody who's interested, if you look at my very first Kickstarter I ever ran, very bare minimum. Did we hit goal? Yes. I had an amazing support group um, that, that came in and backed me. But I think I had like 26 backers all up for that first Kickstarter. Mm. Kickstarter number two, met Rob, met uh, Henry, met Eric, found my beta reader, you know, got some really got involved in, you know, IFA, which is in its in the fantasy addicts facebook group which by the way mm -hmm. huge plug and shout out to the indie fantasy addicts they're a great group if you're looking for indie books looking to read indie great group to follow um and they just provided so much feedback so now i have these amazing banners that match the theme of my book you know i've got breakdowns of the story breakdowns pictures involved throughout it you know all of these different things that you know will attract people who don't know me right mm. who don't understand the project who will look at it so oh that looks aesthetically pleasing i'll now read it and see if it's worth my time and since it looks clean and cut and the and the verbiage is right they're like i'm willing to give this author a shot so i think right now i'm sitting at um oh i'd have to look uh i'm not sure exactly how many i'm at but uh 45 backers, 45 backers a weekend, you know, compare that to, I think, I think I had like 24, 25 for my first one. I think I netted 54 at the very end of my last one. So I'm like mm. almost already, yeah, 54 backers for my last one. I'm already at 45 only one weekend. I've not even started like really pushing or promoting this because it's like not the end. Cause you know, near, there at the end, you want to hit that stretch goal. And so anybody right. who's interested in running Kickstarters, let me tell you, Promote the first three days of your Kickstarter and then push the last five days because you'll have backers that'll drop over that period of time because it's a long period of time from the pledge to the end. But, you know, if you can if you capture those people those last three days, they don't have to sit there and think, oh, do I really need another book? <laughs> do I really need another comic book? Do I really need another movie? Do I really need another board game? And they can, you know, rescind their backing, which it happens like and that's the other thing. It's like I set those expectations for myself. Mm. Right. So when I look at my stretch goals. I've, I've, I've buffer in now a cushion. I didn't have stretch goals at all for my first Kickstarter. No stretch goals, just a goal. Right. <laughs> and like, and now my people are interested because every new backer we get, my people who have already chose to back get something else. They don't even have okay. to pay another cent, right? Like we went from not a, not having chapter headers. And this is what I mean by chapter headers. If I open up my book here, um, Aaron did these amazing detailed chapter headers. Wow. You know? Like, and there's different ones for different characters. So you already know, like, when you start the chapter, who is what, what the perspective. I wasn't going to be able to afford that from Azure Tides, but because I set this new stretch goal, now I'm going to have chapter headers. Right. Hit $2,000, there's going to be a full page illustration. Well, you've already bought the book, whether it's an ebook, paperback, or hardback, you've already pledged it. It's going to be there for you. So, right. Now my people who are supporting me are telling their friends, sending it out, be like, hey, check this out because they get a benefit. And if it right. becomes an audio book, every single person who pledged 
for a hardcover gets the audiobook code for free. Every wow. person. And then if you did the ebook or the paperback pledge for an additional five dollar add on, I'll send it out to you. And that's a that's a fourteen ninety nine dollar ebook for five right. bucks. So and so and so so remind people that so those that might be listening or, or, or watching this, they would say, But you know what, David, I never read the first book, so I can't I can't back this one because I didn't read the first book. What would you tell them? Pick it up. It, it, it's right. two simultaneous stories. You okay. can start with any one. And honestly, Birthright is like my epic fantasy baby where I put mm. like a lot of world building, a lot of storytelling. Azure Tide's hits the ground running. I explain the magic system. I explain the characters. I explain the scenes. But it's not nearly as front end heavy with establishing a lot of the world. So if you really are just wanting to dive in, plus if you read Azure Tides first and then you go and read Birthright, you'll understand a lot of stuff that's happening early on that might be a little bit harder to grasp. Okay. But so the, you, you don't have to read first, the. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. I said, so you don't have to read Birthright first. You can actually yeah. read this and it could, it reads on all on its own. Yeah. So the way, the way it'll work is Azure Tides, you'll need to read before I sub produce book two in the, like book two of the Pharaoh Mage Saga, which will be Chains of a Broken God coming out next year. Mm -hmm. um, you'll need to read Birthrights and Azure Tides, but you can read those in any order. And then after Chains of a Broken God, I'm going to release two more stories uh whether they're not full-length novels like azure tide or a novella that'll tell the story of two other characters that'll be interjected into book three okay. okay and what that does is keeps you from reading a book like this and having to be introduced to seven eight <laughs> nine unique characters in one book and the cool thing about it is you don't have to actually read those side novellas or novels to get the clear story you'll just miss some of like what's going on uh right. you can go all the way through the main series but if you really want to understand where these characters are coming from what they're doing and really more than anything understand the villains because there's a lot it's a lot more villain heavy in my side stories it's a lot it that's where i would i would point people right right and who doesn't love a good villain right yeah <clears throat> And like you said, so let's go over a bit some of the some of the stretch goals as we as we talked about because for those that are inter so that for those that are, are interested, you can you know for so like the first of you you can pledge show for three dollars you get the actual ebook correct yep absolutely we'll deliver it to you in EPUB or PDF format whatever's easier for you you'll be able to download it and yeah you you get it like if you, it's only three dollars. Right. And and as I said, we hit that thousand dollars, so they're gonna have those really cool illustrations on there. Wow. <clears throat> right. And then you have for, for so the fifteen dollars is that's basically your your masthead one right there, right? You get that's that's the paperback. That's the paperback. And again, this is not a novella. This is not like a you know, a, a fifteen, twenty thousand word little short story. This is fifty plus thousand word full length novel. Like it's right. It, it, it's not a it's not a little side story it's it's very well crafted and you get some really really cool character development and right. dragons and so how many how many pages is that when you're talking about fifty thousand words that's about so when you're when you're looking uh and i haven't converted it all the way over but mm. like this one here uh we're coming in right at for a heart for the hardcover because the words are a little bit bigger in the hardcover editions right right um, this was 100, 179,000 words, and we're sitting right at 500 pages. So wow. I'm going to say this one will come in at about a third of that size. So right. like a 200 plus, in, right. you know, 180 page full, you know, like I said, a right. full length novel, several chapters. Yeah. I think three different point of views that are very in depth, lots of lots of good storytelling in it. Right. Wow. That's awesome. And then you have on here, you got, and then, and then you got like a, you know, that's, a, and that's a really good price right there too. When you're talking about it is like, you get the ebook and the paperback for $18. So, mm -hmm. and if you think about it, if the three, if it's $3 for the EPUB, then you're paying $15 for a brand new 
book, which is a plus you get deal. the digital assets as well. So so right. what Aaron is drawing, if we hit that two thousand, you'll get a digital poster of that as well. Like you'll get so you could print out that digital art piece that you have. You can save it as a screensaver if you really like nice. it. And I can't say what it is because the goal has not been unlocked yet. But I know what it is, and <laughs> it's it's pretty epic. Right. And then you got on here also your your hardcover book for thirty dollars. Yeah, Plus, and, and let me talk about yeah. that one for a second because okay, when I sold this one, and again we have sold over two hundred copies of the hardback birthrights. Right. We were selling it for fifty dollars. And people wow. were like, hey, that's a, that's a great value because they're trying to support the author. Not only is Azure Tides substantially less coming in at 30, mm -hmm. if we hit pledge, you get that audio book with it, which is like a fourteen, a fourteen ninety nine dollar <laughs> discount. <laughs> so wow. you're really getting if we hit that four thousand five hundred, you're getting a full hardcover for the same price as the paperback. Because you're getting an audio book for fifteen that's worth fifteen dollars for free. Wow. So it's uh it's pretty darn cool. <laughs> it's a great deal. Right. And now what what do you have on there? So with that, you also have on for 33, because then you just have a little bit of a jump on there where you actually get the ebook mm -hmm. with this for the yep. 33. Yeah, so that way you would get, again, if we hit that one, you get two options. You'd have it so you can have it on to go and a physical copy. Right. And again, like I said, hitting that that third tier, will you'll have three options for only $33 to consume. Right. And then what about you have on here also for, for $100? Explain, uh, talk to us, go walk, walk us through this one here, the two-book bundle. So the two-book bundle, that that would be for those people who want this book signed right. and sent um, and Azure Tides. So there's a, there's a two book paperback and a two book um, and a two book uh, hardcover edition. I will say on those, if you look at them, you're like, hey, the price on these, it's a little bit steep, right? Mm. But the thing is, is this are for the people who really want to see this campaign through, right? right. I get it. Uh, I get it that it may not be the the most advantageous for others, uh, but this if you really want to help me see this through, that right. those are the pledge tiers that really help get us there. And I think we have a couple backers on on the hardcover uh, right now uh, for the for the two book bundle for the hardcover. Uh, yeah. and maybe they did the early bird, but I can't really see. Yeah. But uh, it's it's uh, those kind of things right there really help us get there, and that's what I love about Kickstarter. Um, is there such a great community of people who they're like, hey, we understand that this has got a price tag to it, and we're all right. human, right? But they they believe in what we're trying to put out there, right? And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to accomplish, we're trying to accomplish making this into an audio book. And I would say there's 45 people right now that are actively hoping that that becomes the case, and they're fully invested in it. And right. I'd love to see it double in the next three weeks. Right. And so, you know, our, 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 our mutual friend, uh, Robert Zingari, he's helped you out a lot on this. What, what would, what is some of the advice that he gave you for this project that you'd like to share with our, our listeners and, and viewers? Absolutely. So the biggest piece of advice he said is pre-marketing and get a mailing list out. So mm -hmm. every single person that backed my last Kickstarter um, that approved, I checked, they approved to have their email list. I added to a mailing list. When I launched my last um, Kickstarter, I had six followers when I launched it. Right. This one, I had 24. Right. The, the moment we launched, well, not the moment, within four hours, every single one of those people who were following me pledged. Hmm. So we were able to hit pledge goal because I had those followers already backing me. So right. I came into this with people who were excited about the project. Um, thankfully, a lot of people had read Birthrights and had positive things to say about it and reviews about it. And they were just excited to get back into the world. Mm. And so that's probably the number one thing he said. And the other thing is networking among in other indie authors, right? Because you don't know what you don't know. And right. 
you know, just shared experience. It's been fantastic. Like I said, he introduced me to that IFA group, the Indie Fantasy Addicts group. And, you know, since then, um, uh, I'm a little scared to pull out my Indie Fantasy stack of books, but it's grown tremendously. <laughs> um, I think I, I think I've backed uh, eight Kickstarters uh, this year. So, which for some that's not a lot, but for me, you know, having gone from never done this before to like backing eight Kickstarters, and I think every single one of them are indie published Kickstarters. Um, man, it's been great. It's been so fun, you know, because it's such a great community. Because that's one of the hardest things about, you know, being an author is like, how do you actually stay current? How do you stay with your community? And I think Kickstarter is a great way to like reward the people who are buying because, right. like, hey, Who's to say that if this doesn't keep going, I don't throw in extra things. Like this time we're able to do t-shirts. That's one of the add-ons. Yeah. Like uh, we got, we're going to put the dragon logo uh, on one shirt and then the birthrights paw print on the other. And if you want one for like 15 bucks, you can pick up a t-shirt. So like, those are things like that, that I wasn't going to be able to do before. So. Right. Yeah. And I did, I did notice too, that you did also um, back this uh, a, a little known, author named brandon sanderson too that you backed his uh book yeah his his boy that was a harvard how do you say indie publishing because technically that was an indie but uh <laughs> listen the man's a machine <laughs> in covid and let me tell you uh, allow me to indulge yourself if you don't know this story so brandon <laughs> sanderson released during covid or not released wrote four books during covid <laughs> outside of his regular scheduled stormlight books star sight books evil librarian books uh <laughs> mistborn book he i mean he wrote four secret books how do you how do you do that <laughs> like how do you have time like the man is a machine so yeah i definitely backed his super excited uh can't wait i did the audio book pledge because again i'm a guy on the road um, and when I have time where I'm sitting down where I could read, I'm a uh, writing. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> so, uh, I don't have time to physically read. So I, I do a lot of audio listening because when I'm not moving, it's the only time I have to write. Right. Right. Um, so, so what's, so then what's, what's next? Cause I mean, we, when we were talking a few months ago, you already had a, now you already have another full book that you're you're putting out on Kickstarter. So when is the net when the Pharaoh Mage saga? That's you said the next one's going to be coming out next year. Next year, next year. I'm probably I'm probably going to launch a Kickstarter to fund editing and production of that book. Okay. That's the biggest thing I've learned. So both with Birthrights and Azure Tides, I was done with the book when I launched my Kickstarter, and I'm expecting to have this fulfilled by the end of December or January. Um, there is yeah. there is risk, and I denoted that that if we hit all of our pledge tiers, it may extend the time to allow the artwork to get finished and to okay. let vocal editing get done, which I think everybody will be okay with that, <laughs> right? Um, with with one of the biggest things I've learned is all the really successful Kickstarters, they they give time between the creation of the Kickstarter and the and the launch of the actual mm. book, so that way they have the money up front do everything they know how much money they have to produce uh, right. which is probably the biggest thing i've learned is like do the kickstarter early so that way you know how much like you have to work with out of the books that you've backed and you've read some of the indie fantasy authors is there anything that you read you're like oh i love that i'm gonna squeeze in something like that in one of my stories that's a brilliant idea Oh man, yeah, absolutely. So I, I've got to call out two. So let me let me throw it out. Uh, Glenn Dahlgren. Now he didn't do a Kickstarter, but he mm -hmm. wrote the House of Prophecy. Well, it's actually the Chronicles of Chaos is the series. Um, but I have been like super invested in his books. Uh, he just really knows how to like drive the knife into your heart, and like your protagonist is never safe. Right. You don't know, like things don't work out. And so like I'm allowing myself a little bit more leeway to the darker side of like some of my more righteous characters um, uh, wrote a really 
brutal scene this morning that I sent to my beta reader and she just like sent back dot 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 and then like the open jaw emoji and then she was like uh, what the heck was that? Uh, she didn't say heck, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I I don't want to, you know, I, I assume we're going to try to keep this family friendly. Yeah. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was great, you know. Other than that, um, Rob, the Dark Necromancer, $20,000 funded for his Kickstarter. His books are amazing. But, I mean, when you when you talk about, you know, what a, what a book looks like, this is mine, right? right. Looks good. This is his. I know. So like, big. look at this. Yeah. And yeah. I am just super excited for the Dark Necromancer to come out because uh, he just, he's a world building machine. I think he is, I think he's going to be one of those in, you know, 15, 20 years that it would be, have been a privilege to have known him because he's going to just take off. Mm. Somebody out there is going to like find his stuff. And he, he I mean, he's going places. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, All right. but those are some big, those are probably the two biggest ones that I've picked up. Right. So if, if somebody to, to make this an evergreen podcast, if those want to read Azure tides and they've missed the, they've missed the Kickstarter or they listen to this three years later, where can they find birthright? Where are they, where can they find Azure tides? Absolutely. So first and foremost, all of my stuff, it's on Amazon, um, but I have a web, I have a Facebook page called the Pharaoh Mage Saga. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, David Andrew Trotter. My profile is public, so anybody can come in and see it. Um, I also am on TikTok. You know, I don't do as many silly dances as the other people do. I try my best, but I'm getting older. My knees kind of hurt. But I'm under there as David A. Trotter 92. Look me up or on Instagram at that's me, uh, D-A-T-Z-M-E 16. Um, just I try to I try to stay connected with the people. I think right. that's the best part about being an indie author is you know my people can ask me questions and boy do I get them. Right. Most of them are like, "Hey, why did you do that to X character?" I was like, I, "I'm sorry, I can't. I don't know what to tell you." <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much, David. You know, listen, you got to make sure that when you have your 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 third book come out, you got to come back on the show. Absolutely. You talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely be back. And, uh, you know, it's been it's been an absolutely phenomenal time again. Um, and I look forward to because there's a couple other secret projects I, too, am working on that are they have nothing to do with the Pharaoh Mage saga. Uh, a couple of short actual short stories uh, oh, cool. that the current running title is called The Worsts. And, okay. uh, and they are the worst. They are just the worst. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a great day to be an author. Right. Excellent. All right. Have a great one. Thanks a lot, David. Thank you. Have a good one. I love that idea. I'm going to put that in my book. I'm going to... <laughs> Timestamp? Time stamp. <laughs> I really hope that's in the bloopers, please. <laughs> um, yeah. So Dan, uh, now he didn't do a Kickstarter, um, right. but uh,